Holy smokes, folks, it is happening. Hey, everyone, me, Kevin here. Tesla is getting added to the S&P 500. We heard uh, just overnight that Tesla is uh, set to join the S&P 500. As per the title and thumbnail, don't even know why you clicked, Tesla is being added to the S&P 500 index. Hey, this is Warren Redlick. As you've probably figured out by now, Tesla is going to be added to the S&P 500 index. Before I get started, I'd like to thank Bradford Ferguson of Halter Ferguson Financial and all my Patreon supporters for helping this channel grow. And remind everyone, please check out the merch. Machine that builds the machine. The machine that builds the machine. I got a lot of t-shirts. Check out the merch. Check out the Patreon below. A quick reminder as well, this is not financial advice. I am not a professional investment advisor. These are just my opinions. There's a lot of Quick news about it without a lot of analysis. I wanted to provide a little bit more explanation of what this is and why this matters, how this is going to affect Tesla's share price. So first of all, what happens is with the S&P 500 index inclusion, there are certain index funds, which are large funds that are required by their rules to hold shares in the companies that are in the S&P 500 index in the appropriate amount to account for those companies' weight in the S&P 500 index. Tesla is going to be one of the largest stocks in the S&P 500 index, and that means that a lot of these funds are going to have to buy a lot of Tesla stock. That creates a surge in demand for Tesla stock. In addition, the S&P 500 index is a benchmark used by many funds, particularly large cap funds, growth funds, they look at how their fund performs compared to the S&P 500. They sell their fund based on how it performs compared to the S&P 500. If a fund has performance greater than the S&P 500, they will brag about it. So a lot of those funds will buy the largest stocks in the S&P 500 so they don't fall too far behind the S&P 500. They don't want to do un they don't want to underperform the benchmark, which when you have an increase in demand and the supply doesn't change in economics, that causes prices to rise. And we did see Tesla's share price rise in after hours trading. So that's a short term effect. Obviously the after hours rating, trading is a very short term effect, but there is a significant short term effect that you've increased the demand for the stock and the supply doesn't increase. There are people who are thinking of selling, that number of people doesn't increase. In fact, it might actually decrease. Now you want to hold the stock longer because it's being included in the S&P 500. And look, I'm not selling. I'm holding my stock for 10 years. Elon's not selling. He owns 20% of the stock. He's not selling. So there's a certain pool of stock that is potentially available to be purchased. And those people will sell, but fewer of them will sell. Now there's people like Kathy Wood and her fund ARK they buy up Tesla until it's 10% of their portfolio. When Tesla stock price rises because of the rules of their fund, they can't hold more than 10% or not for very long. So they have to sell to bring their holding back down to 10%. So that creates some supply. And there are some people who will quote, take profits, something I don't believe in, but other people do. They will sell some stock because, well, I bought it at you know 400 and now it's at 500. I'm gonna take my profits and maybe I'll buy it again later. I'm not a big believer in short-term trading strategies like that, but there are people out there that do believe in that, so that creates some supply. But the supply is more restricted because A, people who hold the stock are more inclined to hold the stock now because it's being added to the S&P 500, so there's a second and more long-term effect. It's not necessarily something that's going to increase the share price, although I think it has some positive impact on share price, but you have a class of shareholders who aren't going to sell. And when you have enough shareholders who aren't going to sell, in my opinion, and I'm not saying I'm 100% sure of this, it tends to stabilize the share price. You have a few different groups of people or institutions who are holding stock in any given company. With Tesla, there are about 20% of the shares are owned by Elon Musk. I think when you include his options, he actually holds more than a 20% share effectively. You have crazy retail investors like me who are, who are determined to continue holding Tesla stock for potentially 10 years or more. I'm 54 years old. I don't need the money now. I am planning on retiring 
well, I'm already kind of retired, but you know, in theory, I'm retiring at 65, which is 11 years from now. I don't really plan on touching my Tesla stock for 10 or 11 years. And I see it as the best investment out there for the long term. If the stock suddenly went to some ridiculous number that's above where I thought it will be in 10 years, then sure, I would sell. But I think the stock has a long way to go to increase. I don't, I think it's, it's not a, there's no sure bets, but it's one of the best bets I see. So I'm just going to hold it. I don't see anywhere else I'd rather invest my money. There's a lot of investors, and I might be wrong, but there's a lot of investors like me who see Tesla as the unicorn, or that's not the right term, but that that ideal stock that there's nothing better than to invest in. It's got great promise for the future. It's saving the world. Whatever your reasons are, there's a lot of people who are just holding the stock, and we're not selling. So that's another group. Now, the rest of the shares are people who are holding as short-term investors, as trading strategies, whatever. So let's say that's, you know, if Elon's 20% and crazy retail investors like me are 10%, that leaves 70% of the shares out there free to move. I should mention, I think Larry Ellison, who is the Oracle CEO, a Tesla board member, he is the largest individual shareholder other than Elon. I think Larry Ellison is just going to hold it because he is so wealthy that, you know, if Tesla goes to zero, he, he barely notices the loss. He owns like $3 billion in stock. But if it 10Xs, he's got $30 billion and it's a matter. So I, I think he's playing it. I think he's going to hold it and he's going to watch it. So that's still, that's not that a, a huge percentage. But when you just add up these investors, that's like 30%, let's say. But now you add in the index funds. And they're going to buy up in the ballpark. And I'm, I'm guessing here, they're going to buy up in the ballpark another 10% of the shares. So now you go from 70% of the shares that are freely traded by people who are gaming or otherwise flexible to 60%. So you've decreased the supply of stock that's available for sale, not just momentarily, but in the long run, because the index funds can't sell. They have to hold the stock in proportion to Tesla's place in the index. So they buy enough now to meet their standard and they don't really sell. It's not like Kathy Wood who can't have more than 10% in her fund. It's whatever Tesla's value market value is as a share of the S&P 500, that's how much they have to hold. And if they buy the stock and the stock goes up, they're good. If they buy the stock and the stock goes down a bit, they're good. They don't really buy or sell, they just hold. And that's a stabilizing influence on the share price, in my opinion. I think other people might have different opinions about that. I suppose there's a theory that if the 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 widely traded stock is smaller, maybe it creates more volatility. I don't think so. I think it creates less volatility. Now, less volatility, if I'm correct, that there's less volatility, that the share price that the share price fluctuates less. If that's accurate, that is actually a good thing for Tesla's long-term share value because a lot of investors use investing strategies where they value a stock based on both its return and its risk or and they use volatility fluctuation as a measure of risk so if tesla's stock stabilizes if the share price doesn't fluctuate as much as it has been that increases the value in that kind of portfolio analysis i'm thinking of the capital asset pricing model but there's probably other models out there the capital asset pricing model was 20 plus years ago i don't know if it's still in vogue i think it is you ever hear people using the terms alpha and beta? Beta is the volatility. Alpha is the, the likely return. So if people are investing that way and you reduce beta, you reduce the fluctuation, the volatility, for those models, that stock becomes more attractive and people buy more of it. So that's an important long-term effect. So with all that said, for the true long-term investor, I don't think the S&P 500 index inclusion matters a whole lot. What matters is that Tesla continues to grow, that Tesla continues to innovate, that Tesla continues to execute. If Tesla does what it needs to do on the business side of things, that increases revenue, that increases earnings, and fundamentally, a stock is worth what the company is worth, and the company is worth the earnings it produces. To me, Tesla seems to be on a great path to increase revenue. Building multiple new factories is a good sign your revenue is going to go up. 
Tesla is on a good path to increase earnings, getting, producing more efficiently, building factories more efficiently, reducing the cost of supplies like batteries, increasing the volume of supplies like batteries, improving revenue through improved features like full self-driving software. All of these things, improving cost structure by structural battery pack, by better vehicle design, all of things come together to increase Tesla's long-term value. And the S&P 500 index helps, especially as I mentioned, by reducing volatility if it does have that effect. But ultimately what we really care about is, is the company doing what it needs to do to grow the, to grow the business, to grow earnings, to run efficiently, to execute. And from all signs we see, Tesla is being run very well by Elon Musk and his team and has great promise for the future. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out my other videos. I just did a video about Dave Lee as a reaction with Zach and Jesse from Now You Know. I'm about to do another video, a follow-up video on that. I got a lot more videos coming. Please uh, support this channel by subscribing. Check out the t-shirts below. Support this channel on Patreon. And thank you very much for watching.